How do you spend your Friday nights? I spend mine sitting in my room with a cup of tea smelling bleach because I just cleaned my bathtub for the first time in Lord knows how long. But I'll spare you the gory details. Too hot. Hello, my name is Sydney and it is indeed a Friday night and I haven't filmed my video yet even though it's supposed to go up tomorrow so that's what we're doing now. And today I'm here to see just how stereotypical of a writer I am. I saw Andrea do this video over on her channel and I will link her video down below. It's not exactly a tag but I thought it would be a really fun idea. She's an expat from America, she lives in France and she's also a creative writer. So it's like cool, great. Let's do this. Let's see. Okay, so I just basically googled writer stereotypes and I clicked on an article that looked interesting. This article in particular has 17 different writer stereotypes, so let's just get into it and we'll see how well I fit in. So number one, writers are caffeine addicts. So, we have my lovely Edgar Allan Poe tea mug here and it is tea. And I don't think there's caffeine in it, although I have accidentally drinking tea with caffeine in it. Although, that's just because I didn't know it had caffeine. I honestly, for a while, for the longest time, I didn't know that tea had caffeine in it. That explains the jitteriness. I just thought I was like on a high of writing or something. I didn't realize it was caffeine the whole time. <laughs> I don't crave it. I don't have any sort of withdrawals. I don't drink coffee. I don't like the taste. If it happens to be in the tea that I'm drinking, that's fine. But I don't, I'm not addicted to it, you know. Number two, writers are grammar slash spelling police. I think for me, this is kind of true. I think on a scale of one to five, one being like completely nonchalant about it and number five being like a grammar Nazi or something, I think I'm like a three and a half. I'm definitely, I definitely used to be like a four or a four and a half for the grammar rules that I did know. But I was like, I've always broken grammar rules, you know, it's, it's funny, you look back and you read something and you're like, wow, I really did use the wrong form, form of there in that sentence. And you feel a little bit of a shame, but it's okay as long as you know the difference. But now I'm like, you know what? Put your comma. Don't put your comma. Actually, let's not go there just yet. I'm still, I definitely believe in the Oxford comma, okay? Please put it there, folks. It's for clarity, okay? But don't get me started on the hyphen, the M dash, and the N dash. Number three, writers are hermits. I feel attacked. I feel personally attacked by this one. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but yeah, that's definitely true. I could not be more of a hermit if I tried. So, I mean, if I didn't have a job, I mean, I go other places, but like, I mean, look at me, I'm in my apartment on a Friday night cleaning my bathtub. If that doesn't say hermit, I don't know what does. <laughs> Number four, writers prefer cats to humans. I mean, writers are cat people. Um, so I apparently am allergic to cats, but I do like cats. It's interesting because when I was four years old, that was the only time I've ever had a pet. Although my dad has had fish. The only time I've ever had a pet was when I was four. There was a cat named Heidi who we got from some family friends and her name was Heidi because she liked to hide behind things. So you would come home and she's hiding behind like the entertainment unit or something. Um, she broke a vase one time and jumped up on the table. It was a great day. I don't dislike cats. And then a few years ago, I found that I'm allergic to them, which was like really weird. Since then I've like breathed the same air as cats and I've been fine. So I don't really know how I react or how severe this allergy is, but, or should I say how severe this allergy is? I put the quotes on the wrong word. Um, bunny ears maybe i should get a bunny i think cats are great i would love to have a cat one day if if i'm not gonna like die from touching it or something i feel like i get the cat i feel like we might understand each other you know we might just kind of like stare at each other from across the room and be like don't invade my space but we'll be chill you know as long as we each understand our boundaries we'll be okay <laughs> number five writers drink in excess um i eat carbs in excess is that the same thing no I, I would say no um i don't in fact even right now i'm very thirsty and i my tea is a little too hot to drink but yeah i don't this is not me i don't drink alcohol i don't drink coffee i mean i drink water but even that i don't drink enough of and i love water so that says something okay number six writers are messy i'm like messy to a point and I'm less messy than I used to be. Like, I can let things get to about here and then I have to clean everything. Like, my bathtub, you should have seen it. Oh my gosh, okay. But I cleaned it, okay. <laughs> so I like, I don't, I like things to be organized. My car is like spotless. There's some dust, but you won't see anything hanging out back there. I don't keep my stuff in my car. Like, once the sink is piled up with dishes, 
and I have no choice but to wash it because all of my spoons are in there, then I'll wash the dishes, you know? It's like you don't do laundry until you run out of underwear or something. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the next one. Number seven, writers are procrastinators. Well, it is a Friday night and my video is supposed to be uploaded tomorrow in like 12 hours, so you tell me. <laughs> Number eight, writers work on their stories at coffee shops. Yeah, if you watched my, any of my videos, I think you could do a drinking game and take a shot every time I mention going to Barnes & Noble. Number nine, writers prefer the classics. I feel like if high school didn't like force these books down your throat then I think a lot more people would be into reading especially reading the classics I do think there's a lot that the classics are good for and I think it's really nice to go back and read certain things you know like I like Edgar Allan Poe my mug here um, and I read 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and like I there was this one okay I forget when it was it was one summer it was like one summer after one of my years in college I went to the used bookstore and I just basically bought used copies of like all these different classic books to this day i've only read a couple of them but i like i like having them around i think that's more the thing i like having classics around i like seeing them on my shelf even if i have no intention of reading them but something about them i don't know i like the gothiciness of it with the monsters and the mythical creatures i love those i like them but i don't prefer them i guess if that's the question i prefer more modern things in general number 10 writers are a depressed melancholic lot okay Edgar Allan Poe keeps coming up in this, and I just don't know what to do about that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, um, I mean, I think I have moments, but not generally. You know, like, I'm fairly an optimistic, upbeat kind of person. I can see how this would be true of, like, a lot of other writers. I think that the good thing about writing is that you can use it as, like, a way to channel your feelings into this thing in a productive way you know so I think that that's good that if you are if writers are a depressed and melancholic lot that at least they have writing to do unless the writing itself is what's making them depressed and melancholic then it's just a vicious cycle it feeds itself number 11 writers can write anything no <laughs> okay <laughs> oh my gosh no I don't okay it's not even that I can't write other things it's that I don't like it or I don't want to you know like it's interesting when I was in school I always said that I liked creative writing and that was the only type of writing that I liked I would say that I hated writing essays and hated writing anything that I had to write um, but I think that I don't hate those things you know it's just like a different part of my brain and it's a different process to write those things even though there's a lot of overlap and at the end of the day I'm still writing and I like doing it like it's fun to like craft sentences and to like figure out what's going on in here and to put it out on paper in a way that other people can make sense of um, or even that I can make sense of later on you know but I, I would not say that I, I feel like I can write other things and like I'm a technical writer so like I write technical things for work um, and I've written all kinds of things like in school and stuff but um, I wouldn't say I want to write everything. Number 12, writers retaliate by writing about people. I've never done this. Um, yeah, I've never written about anybody that I knew. I feel like that would just be too weird. I have named one character after somebody I knew, but it's a family member, you know, who like passed away when I was like way younger. I just feel like it'd be too weird to like write it, especially for somebody who I know like right now even anybody I, who I knew about recently, I feel like it'd be too weird to write about them, you know? Because then I don't feel like I'm making the character my own, you know? And I feel like I probably would feel limited in what I can make this character do and say. I have taken, like, qualities. I've taken, like, a lot from myself and, like, my own experiences. I've taken, like, snippets of conversations and stuff, but not really... Not to retaliate, you know? not even to be nice about like I just I just think that'd be too weird number 13 writers experience writer's block all the time so writer's block is a tricky thing and I feel like I could do a whole nother video about this but now I would say that I okay writer's block seems to be defined or stere or believed to be like this thing when you're trying to write and you just can't figure out how to say it or something but I feel like that's not 
I feel like writer, writer's block in that sense does not exist. You know, it's like if you can't write, you probably either turn the wrong way in your story a little bit ways back and you just have to find out where you went wrong and course correct it. Or you're just not sitting down to devote the time and the brain power and the energy and whatever to writing. You know, like there's a whole bunch of things that feed into it. Maybe you're unmotivated, in which case you need to just sit down and do it. Or you made a wrong turn somewhere so you just go back and you fix it and you sit down and do it you know whatever the case writer's block can pretty much be solved by just sitting down and doing it i definitely used to think that i got writer's block but like as i became like more experienced with writing and stuff i kind of realized what writing writer's block really was and i've not really had it it's just a matter of like other things like if i'm just too lazy to write or if i'm unmotivated or if i can't figure out what i need to do there are are methods to kind of get over that you could brainstorm sometimes you just need to sit down and let the ideas flow like any idea you know just write down any idea even if you think it sucks because once you start shutting down ideas then your brain starts stops producing them lots and lots of stuff but I would say no I don't experience writer's block anymore it's just I experience laziness I mean it's that simple number 14 published writers are rich and famous no I mean though that's kind of the exception not the rule all those books on bookstore shelves are written by people who are writing part-time or maybe they're writing just enough to sustain themselves but they're still not rich by any means you have people like jk rowling and stephen king and george rr R. martin and like all these people who are like making all these money from books you know and it's either earned by a long and hard career of writing dozens of books or maybe they hit success really early or at some point when their book became super popular but there's still like millions of books out there that don't sell well enough or that just don't or just barely get by there's like this whole undercurrent to publishing that most people don't see number 15 writers are unkempt okay I have to look up what this word means <laughs> maybe a little bit yeah yeah I'm, uh, yeah <laughs> number 16 writers are night owls faux show as much as i wish that i was a morning person and i really really wish that i was a morning person because i dream about actually wanting to get up early and getting jump started with my day hopping out of bed the moment my alarm turns off is that what a morning person is i don't know but because i've never been that but i wish i was a morning person but it just doesn't happen you know i i mean like i clean my bathroom at nine o'clock at night okay i obviously didn't get the motivation to really do anything until it's about time for me to go to bed which is usually what happens right um, I can write at any point in the day, but it's not so much like whether it's morning or night, but you know, sometimes I think what it is is that you get to the end of the day and you realize you haven't done anything and so you have to like, that's when you get the idea like, okay, I'm just going to write or I'm just going to do this thing or that thing. So that way you can go to bed feeling like you've done something, you know, it's part of that procrastination. Oh my gosh, it's procrastination. I wonder if that's related. <laughs> okay, is there a correlation or causation between procrastinators who happen to be night owls and morning people who get things done earlier rather than later? Y'all, science, man, science. Come on now, somebody get on this experiment. <laughs> and number 17, writers are broke. Yeah, my friend, that's very true. But let me tell you, this is why I have a day job. This is kind of fun to do, it's, you know, see how I fit in on the spectrum. So, of those 17 stereotypes, I hit 7. <laughs> so I guess I'm not your stereotypical writer. I will leave this article down below, but you can also just Google search for writer stereotypes and uh, see how stereotypical of a writer that you are. Yeah, and let me know down below if there are any stereotypes that I missed from the article or if you guys fall into any of these and let me know. You know, we can see how we how we correlate, not how we causate. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I need to go to bed. I think the bleach is getting to my head. But don't worry, I have the window open and I have the fan going and I have the vents on in my bathroom. It's just not really going anywhere. Thank you guys so much for watching. Give this video a like, hit subscribe, and I will see you next time. Toodaloo! La 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 la